promises of God, very clearly one of the most important subjects of the Word of God. There are more than 7,000 precise, precious promises in the Bible. These were made by God to man. In today's teaching time with Dr. Lester Sumrall, we will be looking at the many facets of these glittering diamonds of truth. Some are startling, others breathtaking. Now, here is Dr. Lester Sumrall. Nothing is so exciting as God's Word. That is because it is a living Word, and it can mean one thing to you today and something brand new tomorrow. That's because it is a living Word. It meets every human need, every human circumstance, every human problem, and whatever you have any need of, God's Word is the answer to that need. Apply it. It's a salve that heals. It's a pill that goes down in God's pill that does its own work. And whatever you need, God's Word has an answer for it. If you believe it, say amen. amen. <laughs> I'm a little sorry that uh, this is our last lesson for this time in the great promises of God. Uh, you that are visiting with us, this happens to be lesson 26, and we feel like we have just gotten started with it. Uh, we've, we, we're hoping that we have planted uh, seeds of faith in our lives so that these promises of God have come alive. What would you say about that? <laughs> There's no need of talking about a thing if it don't take effect. Uh, if it doesn't help you, uh, then you've almost wasted your time. We want you to cling to the promises, study the promises, and we have tapes of all of these. You can put them on your little tape player and just play them back, the promises of God, and you have 26 different types of lessons. Now, today's lesson, the final, the final lesson uh, here is called the 10 Final Promises of the Bible. And uh, there are 10 of them, and they're all the last promises God made. Uh, they ought to be mighty good ones if they're the last ones. Now, that's only the last ones he made in the book. He's been making them ever since personally, you know, to you and to me. And God will always make promises to us. His promises are his divine commitments, and God keeps his commitments. If you know it, say amen. In Revelation 22 and, and 20, the word says, He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so come Lord Jesus. We discover that the Bible is a book of promises from page one to the last page of the Bible. There are at least 10 beautiful promises in the closing verses of the total Bible. God left us with a final handful of promises which will last forever. Let us begin with some of these promises. The first one, the tree of life, which represents healing, will be ours forever. In the Revelation 22, beginning at verse 1, he showed me a pure river of water of life. He, he put that in there very strong so you'd be sure to understand it. He showed me a pure, there's no pure one on the earth, river of water of life. That means the, the, the waters in that river were living waters. They were not waters like any river on this earth has. Uh, the, the waters on this earth come from under the earth, under the rocks, under the ground, under the mountains, and they flow back into the sea. And they're picked up by vapor, taken back up, and dropped like snow, and they come back down all over again. This is waters that have vitality for living forever in them. They're as clear as crystal. They proceed out of the throne of God and of the Lamb in the midst of the street of the holy city. And on either side of this river are the tree of life, which bear 12 manner of fruits and yield her fruit every month. And the leaves of this tree were for the healing of the nations. And so we have here the river of life and the tree of life, and it is for the healing of all the nations. The, vast, the vastness of creation in, after the millennium uh, is going to be far beyond any comprehension that any human has ever had. There might be a, a million planets with people on them at that time. And uh, there may be nations out there 
that are only semi-related to God. And in those areas, it says that the leaves of this tree will bring healing to those whole nations. And those whole nations. And so we have here the tree of life with healing power. And it's eternal. It's not just for this world, not for just, just this dispensation, but they are going to be there forever. Number two, there is no more curse. In Revelation 22 and 3, it says, And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. From the day that Adam and Eve uh, sinned, there have been all kinds of curses, cosmic curses. Uh, there have been curses in the flora kingdom, and in the fauna kingdom, and in the uh, Homo sapien kingdom. Uh, there have been curses anywhere you looked on the face of this planet Earth. There have been curses there. But when he comes finally, he says, I'm taking care of that. No more. And it's gone forever. No more curses up there, down here, or down there. No more curses. No more blights. Uh, no more dead leaves. No more dead flowers. No more curses. The curse will be gone forever. Uh, no more sickness of any kind. The curse is gone forever. <clears throat> How many be glad to get rid of it? Hey, I tell you, I tell you, no more curses. No more bugs that bite. Man, going overseas is just one of those things that you almost say, well, I don't know where I can be bitten anymore or not. You go over there and all those things bite you up and down all around, and you know it's real interesting. But there won't be any more one time. Uh, number three when in, is Revelation 22, and, and uh, it says, verse 4, and has an A there. It says, and they shall see his face. One of the promises is that in eternity, we shall behold the face of Jesus, nose to nose, eyeball to eyeball, hair to hair. We shall behold him, and we shall see his face. Now, if you want me to be very honest with you, uh, I can do without the palace, and I can, I can do without the mansion, and I can do without a lot of things up there, including golden streets, but I want to see his face. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to heaven just to get rich, all you poor folks. I am not going to heaven just to get rich. I don't want him just to make me rich. I'm not going to heaven just to live in a big house. No, no. I want to go to heaven to see Jesus. And the, the, the sweetest promise that you could offer me in the future is that I shall see his face. There will be completion. There will be fulfillment. Uh, there will be everything that I want when I see his face. Bless God forever. I'm going to heaven to see Jesus. How about you? Amen. All right, number four, it says, and we will have his name. And that is found in the B section of that uh, Revelation 22 uh, verse 4. And it says, and his name shall be in their foreheads. They, he will be branding us with his name. Now, to me, that is a, a most amazing thing. Now, that the, the devil and the Antichrist are always imitators. And the Antichrist is going to brand those that are his with a 666. They have branded him. Now, that is a brand of hell. Once you get it, you've got it forever in the wrong place. But when we get to heaven, he shall place his name, the Bible says. He shall place his name in our foreheads. There won't be any doubt in heaven when you meet an angel. He won't have it. There won't be any doubt when you meet the redeemed. They got it. And so whenever you see anyone in heaven, you'll know whether they are one of these redeemed ones or not one of these blood washed ones or not, and because they will bear his name in their foreheads. Now, I don't mind being branded the right way. Oh, I've been that way a long time. There were people that used to brand full gospel people as Pentecostal people. And uh, I said, oh, I don't mind uh, uh, bearing the, the mark as long as I got the goods, you know? Well, I, I would hate to bear, bear the brand and, and not bear the goods. But if I can have the goods, I'm willing to take the brand. And so uh, all my life, I, I, I've accepted that. 
If you can give me something good, it don't matter to me what the brand is, what people say about it, and what people might like it or dislike it. You're liking or disliking a thing because I have it is your problem, not mine. If I got it and I like it, it's all finished as far as I'm concerned. You're laughing or you're mocking, that's your problem. Go ahead and have your own problem. But in my own life, if I'm satisfied, bless God, I'm happy. Are you folks cold? <laughs> Say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. I, you're here. I know that now. I was beginning to wonder. Here are the great promises that God is the great finale of the promises of God. When he says, I'm going to give you the tree of life. There won't ever be any more curse. And I will, and you shall see my face and be with me forever. You will bear my name in your forehead. And then he says, I'm going to give unto you that thing that you want. Eternal light. Revelation 22 and 5. There should be no night there. Be no night there. And they need no candle there. Neither the light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth light, and they shall reign forever and ever with him. Now, I, I know that uh, uh, that'll, that'll hit you a little hard there. I, I recognize that. Uh, saying we don't need any sun, we don't need any electricity. But you want to remember, before God created the sun, heaven was full of light. And when there was darkness in the universe, he spoke in Genesis 1 and 3 and said, let there be light. So that thing that he created, he, he just phased it out, you know. He had something so much better. And so pouring forth from the throne of God is an illumination a million times or maybe a billion times brighter than the sun. And so he says, why bother with the candles? Bless God, the original light is shining here. Uh, the beginning of light was shining here. That which created brilliance, uh, it will be shining out under the hearts and the lights. Say, I'm going to heaven. How about you? I want to see all these things. I'm inquisitive about it. And it's going to be exciting. And these will be the fulfilling of the final promises of the word of the Lord. Now, in number six that you have there, uh, it, it says that, and they shall reign forever and ever with him. Uh, that is Revelation 22, uh, verse 5, and they have that uh, as a section B, that we will reign with him. Now, uh, when a man and, and a woman uh, marry and they enter into their house, they reign together. Uh, he has a throne. It's in the sitting room in a comfortable chair. And when the dog gets in there, he says, get out, you know. She reigns in the kitchen. And when he comes in there, she says, get out. You know, <laughs> they have their, their separate thrones. And the Bible says that in heaven, we're not just going to be visitors up there. And, and we're not just going to be observers. The Bible says we're going to have our area of reigning up there. That's not bad, you know. And I don't know that anyone here has a job in the, in the government reigning in the present government. And if you do, God bless you. But uh, I don't have one with them. That's what I mean. I'm not reigning anywhere in the government, but the, the, the Bible tells me that when I get up there, I'm not only going to just have a seat in heaven. He says, I am going to reign with him. How many like that? Yeah. We're going to reign with him. Now, in order to reign, you're going to have some creatures to rule over. You can't reign without creatures to rule over, you know. You can't boss if there's nobody to boss. You can't boss an empty house unless you're going cuckoo or something other. you got to have somebody to, to boss over, you know. And the Bible says we shall reign with him. See, it gets good, doesn't it? That it, Because we have loved him, because we have served him, then we shall reign with him. I, I like that very much. In Revelation 22, these are all in that last chapter of the Bible, you see. In verse 12, it says, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. Another one of the promises. To give to every man according as his work shall be. You ought to study that one for an hour at least. Or maybe some of you need it for a week. Uh, he says that when he comes, his reward is with him. Now, now you that are serving the Lord, you're going to get something. You're going to get something. God loves you. 
His reward is with him. Say reward. Yeah. When I was a kid and, and I was told if I were to bring in some stove wood, I was going to get a reward. It don't matter if it was only a piece of candy or if it was a 10 cent piece. I want you to know I stood around until I got it. Yeah, there was no going out, no coming in. I stayed right there until I got it. I tormented anybody in sight until I got it. I knew I was supposed to have it and I was going to have it and I wasn't waiting for it. When I finished my job, I wanted it. And if you wanted me irritated, just delay the reward and you had it. The Bible says that we have a reward coming. And how many believes he's faithful? All right. Are you working for that reward or not? Do you think you're going to get any? You see? He says, I come and my reward is with me. And he says, to give to every man. How many believes that's every woman too? And every woman. How? According to his work. Now what you're doing for Jesus? Brother was asking you to bring more people to the class. Uh, that might be exactly how you will be rewarded, whether you did or didn't, whether you didn't bother, whether you didn't care. Did you know there's souls going to hell all around us all the time? And God might be holding you 100% responsible for somebody. And all you've got to do is invite them to come over and worship with you and come over and, and learn with you the word of the Lord. Uh, God wants us to be faithful servants of his. If you know it, say amen. The time is coming when we're going to be rewarded for all the life that we've lived. And I just want to say to all of you, don't be feeling sorry for me for what I do for Jesus. I'm not foolish. I'm working for something. And don't ever say, now slow down. Don't do so much. Ha <laughs> ha. You don't know what kind of reward I'm working for. I'm working for, for big stuff, you know. And I'm not going to slow down for you or anybody else because I want it and I'm striving for it. And he's going to give it to me. He's going to give it to me. The Bible says he's going to give it to me according, you know, according to my works, according to my works. And so I'm going, to, I'm going to move in on it. And I urge you to. I'm warning you about it. I'm telling you about it. The promise is there. Receive the promise. Accept the promise. And all the people said, let it be that way. All right. Uh, our next one uh, says, uh, in ver in, it's, it's your number eight one that we will receive eternal life. Uh, now, if there is anything that the human person seeks for, it's life. Life without pain, life without sorrow, life. Uh, living, living, we want to live. And, uh, but we don't want to live unhappily. We don't want to live in necessity. We want to live in plenty. And God made us that way, God made us that way. And we want to live in plenty. But the greatest thing we want is this thing called eternal life, to continue to live and to learn and to love. In Revelation 22 and verse 14, it says, Now blessed are they that do his commandments. Now that word blessed there in the Bible is uh, related to happiness. Happy. Happy are they that do his commandments. Happy are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life. They that do his commandments, they have a promise that they have a right to the tree of life. Uh, in Genesis 3, 22, Adam was removed from the Garden of Eden after he had sinned and transgressed and revolted and rebelled against the Most High God because God did not want him to eat of this tree of life while he was in a sinful state. But when we leave this world and get into our divine relationship, it says that we are going to eat of the tree of life. And in eating of the tree of life, you have eternal life. You live and live and you live and you live. Uh, it's so difficult for us humans to realize that we have confinements. And our confinements have to do with time. And... Eternity always baffles us. Men and denominations quarrel about the Bible when it says eternal fire and, and, and e eternal, eternal life because we are creatures that measure things. And when you deal with eternity, it does not measure. There are no measures. And the, re the fantastic thing is that today and yesterday and tomorrow are all the same thing. 
Are you here now? And that there, there, there is no difference. And there isn't any. There isn't any tomorrow. And there isn't any yesterday. There's only now, you see. And so people want to quarrel with God and say, now, the sinners are going to burn forever. Well, you don't know what it means, you see. Because it is now, you see. It is now. It, it is not. There, is, there are no tomorrows. And there are no yesterdays. It's only now. And that's the reason when Moses said to God, who are you? He says, I am. I got him to his knees, you know. I am. He wasn't I was. He wasn't I will be. He is I am. Did you ever notice in the Bible that when God chose the children of Israel, that in each generation, he called them the same name, children of Israel? Yeah. He, he never went into the grandfather stage. Did you ever notice he said, I am the God of Abraham. I am the God of Isaac. And I am the God of, of Jacob. God in every generation deals with you as if there had never been another one. That's because he's eternal. He doesn't know generations, you see. He's eternal. God has no grandchildren. How many are glad for that? You don't belong to God because your grandma did or because your father did. You belong to God because you were born again and a child of God and you are a child and not a grandchild and not a great-grandchild. Are you still here? Not adopted. You're born into the family. You're the royal blood. You got the real thing on the inside. If you're glad for it, say amen. And he says to us, there are promises to those kind of people, the tree of life was taken away from Adam and it's given to the redeemed. In verse 17 of that same chapter, if you got your Bibles open, Revelation chapter 22. It says, And the Spirit and the bride uh, say, Come. Uh, the bride is the body of Christ. The Spirit there is with a capital Spirit, meaning the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Ghost. And let him that heareth say, Come. That means byways and highways or anybody. They say, Come to God. Whoever you are, wherever you are, come to God. And let him that is a thirst, if you want to come, you can come. If nobody tells you to come, you can come. If nobody says you can be saved, you can be saved. You don't need an introduction. You don't need anybody to invite you. You're welcome into the kingdom of God. How many are glad for that? All you got to do is be thirsty. It, they that are thirst come. Then he says, it, making it broader all the time. Whosoever will, let him come. Even if you got a will to come. Not even thirsty, but you got a will to come. Whosoever will, let him come and take of the water of life freely. The waters of life. The waters of life has to do with, a, with an eternal satisfaction, has to do with eternal bliss, has to do with eternal living. The waters of living, of life. You say, Brother Sumrall, it's difficult to get through to that. Well, in natural here, if you don't have water, you die pretty soon. Two or three days and you're gone if you don't have some water. You can do without bread for quite a while, but you don't do without water because you become dehydrated and you can't live. But up there, we have waters of eternity, waters that are living, waters of life that you live forever. Bless God, I'm going to drink them all I want, every time I want, and live and live and live. These are the promises of God that, that are the final promises in the Word. And we're just reminding you that from here back to Genesis 1, it's just loaded with promises and they belong to you. You didn't get excited about it. If I'd have offered you a million dollars and you'd acted like that, I'd have kept the money. In John 4 and 10, and it says, And he would have given thee, uh, he would have given thee living water. Whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into eternal life. Jesus has given an explanation of these living waters that they are eternal life springing up from God, springing up out of heaven, and that they belong uh, to us. Also in, this, uh, in these promises that are the final promises, number nine is Revelation twenty-two fourteen. 14. It says, Blessed are they that do His commandments. That's the commandments of the Lord. And that they might have a right to the tree of life. They have a right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. And so you have a passport 
to a certain place if you do his commandments. And that's through the gates of the city. When you get there, the gates will open and you will be welcomed in. You'll be told that these, the city belongs to you and the gates are open to you because you have kept his commandments. And because you keep those commandments, then you have rights. You have rights that you may enter in through the gates into that city. There will be many that will not get in, but you will get in because you have the passport to enter. And that is that you have done the commandments of the Lord. It's so beautiful that the last promise in the Bible, in Revelation 22 and 14, he says, surely I come quickly. And that's their last promise, the promise of his return. Jesus said in John 14 too, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I wouldn't have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, you'll be there too. You'll be there too. We have a promise of his return. It may be today, it may be tomorrow. Whenever it is, be ready for his coming. If he comes by death and takes you home that way, or if he comes in the clouds of glory that way, be ready when he comes, all of us. I thank you, Father, for the promises of God, the promises of the great book. They are the royal, the royal promises of God. Glory be to God. And they are the exciting promises of God. And Lord, we pray that you will bless every, every one of these today and make these promises live within their hearts because in eternity, we will be so glad we believed. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. Isn't that beautiful? The Lord love you and the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Today's lesson is from the Promises of God teaching series. We hope that you will apply the Word of God discussed in today's program to your own life. An audio cassette of today's lesson is available upon request. To order, send a donation of $5 or more to LaCie, P.O. Box 12, South Bend, Indiana, 46624. Please mention the program number on your screen when ordering. This program has been made possible by private contributions to LaCie. This has been a LaCie Broadcasting Network production.